least we don't have to wear those ridiculous ties anymore. It was such a nuisance. Hello there kitties. I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch, and today I'm gonna talk out of my ass, which means uh, autism spectrum superpowers, because uh, as you may know, today is the second uh, of the April, and uh, the organization who claims to, to make life better for us, uh, named Autism Speaks, says it's uh, the World uh, Autism Awareness Day and the April is the Autism Awareness Month. And uh, to begin with, does, uh, does this organization even speak uh, what we speak or does it speak uh, for us, over us, whose mind do they speak, because uh, they have a long history of uh, trying to find the cure for autism, like, uh, like something like the conversion therapy for the queer people. And uh, what they have done for many years is uh, a long history of uh, peddling basically torture and uh, disrespect for the human rights of uh, the people on the autistic spectrum. And uh, should we even go along with, uh, with what they do, with what they say? And uh, should we accept uh, the discourse that uh, they are peddling or maybe we should uh, create something new, something different that's uh, that's the politics of it all the, you know politics uh, poly means many and ticks are blood sucking creatures and uh, it's, uh, it's all about the certain structures of power that uh, are present in the societies. Those structures of power affect the lives of, uh, of uh, people on the autistic spectrum in this context and uh, people around the people on the autistic spectrum. Like, uh, like if you've got a prejudiced uh, family member who wants to help, help, help. Yeah, but uh, does more harm than helping. And uh, yeah, yesterday I was at the support group for people with uh, with the autism spectrum superpowers, like uh, like I said, the, the, what uh, what was once uh, named uh, Asperger syndrome. I was diagnosed uh, when I was seventeen, and um, one of the girls there. Of course, she's, uh, she's pretty smart, but uh, her mother tried to look for some pseudoscientific uh, alternative medicine thing that, uh, yeah, she was in denial about, uh, about Natalie being on the autistic spectrum and uh, she was looking for the ways to cure that, uh, to make, uh, make her neurotypical. And I say fuck that, we will always stay the way we are and we have to do whatever we can to make the best uh, out of it. Like... Um, Raising our self-awareness about, about our sensory issues, about in our passions, about uh, our superpowers, about our intelligence. 
and uh, what I could tell you is uh, that uh, we really need to um, stop giving a shit about uh, about uh, assimilation to the non-autistic society like uh, so much uh, is spoken about um, the kids on the autistic spectrum like the problems it's always problems it's it's not their unique uh, abilities it's not about their potential it's uh, it's the behavior problems, uh, it's uh, the maladjustment to um, the rest of the class and uh, that kind of shit that's pathologizing and uh, and uh, the way we are viewed uh, is uh, very pathologizing and we really need to um, come out with a different narrative about uh, being on the autistic spectrum. It's, us, it's up to us, uh, the adult uh, people on the spectrum, the self-aware people on the spectrum, the self-advocates, to educate uh, the others, those in, uh, in our surroundings. Some of us uh, do a lot of work. Uh, some people write books, others uh, do some uh, activism. I'm trying here now, mind me. Probably failing, as always. But, uh, but still, it's, uh, it's a lot of work to do, but um, this work is needed and uh, it's pretty much in parallel with what I said uh, just uh, two days ago about uh, the transgender day of visibility that uh, our community really needs uh, to struggle for our self-determination and, uh, and by the way while I'm uh, at the Autism Awareness Day thing. There are also some uh, different holidays uh, like uh, the Autism Pride Day, and uh, it's gonna be like uh, 18th of uh, of uh, June, and uh, the logo behind. Uh, the Autism Pride Day is a little bit different because it it features uh, an infinity sign and I would say it's uh, way better than... Uh, yeah, I don't, don't even mention it. <laughs> we all know that. Nah. And uh, by the way... Uh, I've noticed, uh, at least in the Polish discourse about uh, autistic spectrum, that uh, it's always children, always kids, always uh, teens, always youngsters with their problems, but uh, whenever we become uh, adults, uh, uh, it's like we disappear. Why is that? Like, uh, our problems... Uh, as uh, adults in, on the autistic spectrum become invisible, like uh, like the access to healthcare, like um, being diagnosed uh, when um, when being an adult, like um, like functioning in uh, relationships, like uh, forming relationships, like uh, academic and professional life like uh, sensory issues because uh, because they uh, will be present like uh, yesterday i had a worst meltdown in my in a few years of my life uh, lately i think because uh, 
because uh, my friend's dog was uh, barking loudly and constantly and in a high-pitched voice. And um, it was in a small enclosed space and uh, I was fresh uh, out from uh, the outside and it was cold as fuck. Uh, it was cold and very windy and, uh, and I had a lot of uh, sensory fatigue going on uh, before the barking even started and uh, after it started uh, it, it just didn't go away it, uh, it was also uh, the bright light in the corridor that uh, got to me and uh, if something like this happens uh, I can uh, totally lose control on uh, what's going on with me I can fall down, I can pass out and and the best thing you can do if uh, something like this happens it's, uh, it's kind of similar to um, electrical uh, safety when, uh, when helping someone who is being electrocuted the first thing you have to do is uh, determining whether it is safe for you to do anything in this situation and the second thing is to cut off the power cut off the electricity by uh, any means uh, necessary whether it is uh, dragging the, um, the person with uh, an uh, insulating thing or, or disconnecting the power or, or anything like that, uh, the first thing you do is uh, always cut the fucking power so that uh, it uh, doesn't uh, keep um, electrocuting the person and then you can uh, move on to any life-saving activities uh, that have to be done like uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation and uh, and uh, giving someone um, some warm coating and uh, and something like that, like uh, calling professional help and and yes, but uh, but it uh, it shares a lot of parallels uh, between uh, having a sensory overload and meltdown and uh, being electrocuted. That's what I can. Uh, tell you from my point of view, from um, an autistic per person's uh, point of view and an uh, electrical engineer's point of view. And uh, I really think that um, it should all be taught uh, on the first aid courses, because uh, when I was uh, Doing a course uh, for my electrician's license, uh, the first aid course was uh, featured, and uh, and uh, there was uh, nothing like this. Uh, even though the topics uh, outside of uh, electrical safety were covered, but um, there was nothing like like this. Uh, when it comes to sensory overload, anything, anything uh, that uh, was the closest to the, um, the thing I'm talking about was an uh, epileptic seizure, and uh, and that's uh, pretty much uh, it. It has some similarities, but uh, it has some differences. Um, but uh, sometimes it's not just uh, that obvious that uh, you are having a meltdown uh, or are at the onset of meltdown and uh, what I can tell you, you are people on the spectrum, if you feel that uh, it's too much, try as much as you can to um, Move away from the situation, if it's possible at all, just to prevent it from uh, from happening if you are prone to it. And uh, 
And yes, I think that would be this. Uh, and uh, by the way, today is my birthday, the 2nd of April. The, the 2nd uh, 18. I won't be turning 36 now. <laughs> and uh, I'm having a little midlife crisis, I think. <laughs> and uh, a lot of uh, imposter syndrome uh, as an uh, electrical or an electronic engineer. I'll be talking about uh, those things in the future. But right now it's um, it's time to call it uh, it's time to call it a day it's uh, it's gonna be fun because today I'm going to some uh, some reception some meeting about uh, the association of uh, people on the autistic spectrum uh, here in Gdańsk and uh, and then I'll have a Dungeons and Dragons uh, session, and then I'm uh, gonna hang out with uh, with Big Clive on his stream, and uh, probably as well with Fran on her stream, and uh, it's gonna be a busy day, and uh, not really much time to to do anything lengthy, and I've also got the. ADHD project going on and I yesterday I got the idea to write the firmware for it. This is the um, ADHD advanced dial home device and uh, the, the thing I want it to do is uh, controlling it with a rotary dial to display the data on either, either obtained by the device's sensors or, or uh, queried from uh, the local MQTT broker. And uh, I have to write the code for it. Uh, I wrote the code uh, for the NixiTube display because uh, it has uh, an uh, Node MCU board and uh, ESP8266 uh, as the main controller, and uh, it has an uh, Arduino Pro Mini as the display controller because it needs uh, a lot of uh, GPIO lines, um, and uh, that's what I had at my lab, so I used it. <laughs> And uh, I think that uh, the separation of concerns be between the display part and the control part is a pretty good thing because uh, I could drop in a different display that uh, takes uh, the serial communication uh, as input and uh, still be able to program and use it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, I think that's uh, what I wanted to tell you now. It's scary. The vacuum tube witch. That's Black Mesa. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>